Hi guys, this is Paul Henneke with Swing Rail here. I'm here to talk to you guys about the six main steps of hitting today. These are the things I found over the years that have been most important to me and led to the most success hitting. Uh, the first thing would be vision. Second thing would be rhythm and stance. Uncommitted stride and separation. Front side direction. Ground up rotation. And then plane and extension through the baseball. So there you have the six main steps of hitting, uh, in my opinion. And uh, now we're going to get into each one of those and give you guys a little tutorial. So the first and most important thing with hitting, in my opinion, is vision. Uh, basically what that means is seeing the baseball, seeing the spin, location, uh, type of pitch. And if you cannot see the baseball, you're really going to have a hard time hitting. But it's something that you should really have a focus on every time when you go to work in the cage or in a game is really trying to see the baseball as best as you possibly can because swinging at strikes is ultimately the most important part about hitting. The second step of hitting would be rhythm and stance. So you look around uh, hitters of all ages, anywhere from Little League to the Big Leagues, everyone's got a different stance, different starting place and with their hands, um, but the two main points that I've found to be the most important have been uh, rhythm and then just getting to a solid hitting position. So what I mean by rhythm is having some sort of looseness with your hands and your swing. You generally don't want to start too stagnant with your hands. The looser your hands are, the better you're going to be able to work through the baseball and make some in-swing adjustments to pitches and location. So once we have some good rhythm in our hands, we're going to want to get into our stance. And like I said, this varies for everyone. For me, I have my feet about shoulder width apart, um, nice strong base, almost like you're in a squat, like you're squatting. Um, hands for me generally start right here, connected to my body. You don't want them too far back or too low or too high. Generally, you want them with your elbow about shoulder width, back at about a 45 degree angle. You watch all big leaguers, they get to that position generally. They can start, you can start with it here, start with it here. And once you get into that good position to hit, it's almost always in a good 45 degree angle. So it gives you a good position to hit from, almost like you're ready to throw a punch. So once, once we have a rhythm and stance, in this case for me it'd be right here, the next step is uncommitted stride and separation. So what that means basically is it's your load. So what am I uncommitted towards would be the pitch. A committed, a committed swing for me would be something like this. Where you're lunging at the ball, you're trying to guess what pitch it is, um, and cheat. You want to be uncommitted so that no matter what he throws, whether it's a fastball, curveball, changeup, uh, you're able to make adjustments and see the ball. So, an uncommitted stride and separation to me should look something like this. Right there. Slight stride forward with your front foot directly at the pitcher. And as you're doing that, you want to be really focused on seeing the baseball and not guessing what pitch is coming. And when do we want to start our uncommitted stride and separation? Uh, I would generally say when the pitcher starts to drop his hand and gets to about there, you really want to be early when you hit. So all your actions are soft and early. So when that pitcher is down here, that's when we begin that stride here and separation with our hands to clear some space. So like I said, being early is very important. Uh, better to be early than late. So once we've taken our stride, the next step of hitting for me is front side direction. And what that means is we're just going to track the pitch with our front shoulder into the hitting zone. So I take my stride, see the pitch, and now I'm tracking it to my contact point in the hitting zone. And this is, this is really helpful uh, for different pitch speeds, pitch types, locations. To take your front shoulder to where you think that ball is going to be is going to get you from A to B uh, as quick as possible. So I'm going to give you an example of uh, directing your front side to a, let's say, a fastball in the outside corner. So it should look something like this. Take my stride, load, I see the pitch, the fastball away, I'm tracking my shoulder right to that contact point on the outside corner. 
there, and then I just engage my swing once my shoulder is graded to that pitch location and uh, speed. Uh, now I'm going to show you what it would look like to direct your front side to a, let's say, a fastball in the inside corner. It's going to be a little less turn to the shoulder. Uh, you're going to want to stay a little more square to the pitcher. So I take my stride. I see that the fastball is in the inside part of the plate. I'm not going to bury it quite as much as I would in a fastball away. You want to keep a better posture, a little more square to the pitcher, right here, a little down and in, so you can clear some space and make contact out in front of the plate. I oftentimes see kids a lot um, will overturn their shoulder on pitches inside, and it's really hard to keep the ball fair. So directing your front side, keeping it more square to the pitcher, down as opposed to rotational is really going to help with that. So after we've directed our front side to the baseball, the next part that we're going to work on is ground up rotation. What that means is starting our swing basically with our lower half. A lot of times today you see kids um, start with their upper body. You want to do everything from the ground up in this game, uh, and it starts with hitting. So once we've taken our stride, directed our front side, the next part of our swing is going to be this back leg and taking it to the baseball with some aggressiveness. So it should look something like this. Stride, direction, and then you have the rotation right there. And as you're rotating, you want to make sure that this back foot and leg go first and not your hands. That's going to create kind of a rubber band effect by keeping your hands back as this leads you into your swing. The final part of our swing, after we initiate it with our backside, is plane and extension. And this is all with the hands and upper body. So, take our stride, direct our front side, initiate our back leg. And now we're going to work on this bat path, having a good plane and extending through the baseball. And how we do that is getting, into number one, a good position, like we talked about earlier, with your elbow, shoulder width. And then really focusing on taking this knob of the bat directly to the baseball. And that's going to keep our hands inside the baseball. It's going to create good spin. Um, and it's going to allow you to hit off speed, um, different locations, much better. After we take that knob of the bat to the baseball and get on plane, we want to work on extending through the baseball. Something you hear often is short, too long through. Uh, I think that holds true for the most part. Um, so when you, when you follow through and we reach our contact point, you really want to focus on keeping that barrel in the zone as long as possible and staying through the baseball. Uh, it allows you to have a little more room for air on certain types of pitches, uh, off-speed pitches especially, um, where you finish your swing. Um, for me, I see a lot of kids finishing too low, cut yourself off. For me, it kind of works like an arc, kind of similar to that. Um, gives you the most room for air through your swing.